Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel, The Xanadu Chronicles. My name is Frank and today we're going to do a little decorating. Now if you're anything like me, you like to switch out your vignettes, your decor, uh, at least a couple times a year. Fall and spring is when I do it. And uh, I do it because, one, I like the uh, creativity of it. Two, I get bored looking at the same thing for too long. And three, it allows me to show more of my collections and beautiful things that I you know, have waiting to come out for people to enjoy. So I hope you enjoy what I do today. I hope you get a couple tips and you start decorating around your place. Now, mind you, I'm a little behind for the fall switch out, but better late than never. So let's get started. Now, as you can tell, we are in my dining room and this is what I've had as my centerpiece vignette on my table. Uh, actually, since we uh, moved into the home and I initially set it up. And the reason for that is because I have a lot of wonderful things that were still packed up that I've just been able to get to now and start unpacking. And uh, eventually, hopefully, I'll be selling some things on my Instagram as well as Etsy. And so keep an eye out for my videos because I will be letting you know when that's going to happen. But like I said, I was able to get into this uh, massive supply of wonderful things that I've had just waiting to come out. And now I am ready to switch this out and it came at a great time. So let's get started. Now, I try not to have too many things on the table because this is our only dining table. This is where we eat every single day and it has to be uh, mobile enough to, to you know, get out of the way easily if I'm going to have a party because really, you know, if, if I'm going to have a, um, a dinner party, to have six people sitting around this table, this really can't be here uh, and then have all of the table settings. I like to do maybe just a simple centerpiece display, whatever it may be. Um, but this whole thing cannot be here. But when it's not in use, this is how it looks. So let's switch it out. Now, I tend to go for symmetry, but I'm going to be showing you a couple things, or at least one. Oh no, I'll be showing you at least a couple settings that are not symmetrical, meaning you know you don't have the same things on both sides of a central, you know, piece typically. So let's start with the first one. And after I do each one, I will show you a picture because I know the angle is a little rough right now and the light's really bright because of the sun outside. So I will show you a picture of each finished vignette and then at the end, you'll get to see which one I chose. So, as I said, let's get started. I'm going to move some of the stuff off. And I will be disappearing from screen from time to time because I couldn't have everything that I needed to have out around me to do the display. So I have to go off camera to grab the things. So let's take all of this off. Okay, so first things first. I have an abalone, uh, beautiful abalone tray from Mexico and it's silver plated on the back. So we've got, this is our base. And for me, I like to pull from all my collections, including my dishware. So don't be scared to, you know, layer things up. Most people probably would have started building their display off of this one layer. I am going to not do that. I'm going to layer it up with a beautiful the antique dragon uh, platter from a dish set that I have, a beautiful dish set that I have in my china cabinet behind me. And I think this is from... If I remember correctly, where we bought it from, they told us it was either from the 50s or the 60s, maybe a little earlier than that, but it is a beautiful set. Next, on top of that, is a simple platform. Now, I buy these whenever I can at estate sales or thrift stores or whatever because I love being able to use platforms to raise things up. So that gives some height, some importance. And um, this one is particularly beautiful because of all the carving around it. So... I am going to put this, now this was actually under the flower vase um, that I had originally on the table here. So I use that to raise that up and give some height. I'm going to do that here too. So putting that on there. And going on with that green dragon theme, I am going to put this beautiful terrine on top of here. Now look at how it adds some importance to that piece. It lifts it up. It's gives it some breathing room underneath so you can kind of take in the carving, take in the pattern of what's going on. 
on the plate underneath. Now, excuse me as I fiddle with this because I want to make sure that it's, you know, the handles are out and even. Turn this up there. Okay. All right, that looks good. Hold on. So I've got here two lead crystal candle holders that I've had for years and years. And yes, they are formal and it's glass on glass. So um, basically what I'm relying on is how the light plays onto the intricate carving that's on this. And of course I'm going to put some candles in here, but I wanted to extend this and stretch this out a little bit, use a little bit more of the length of the table. Um, and now I'm going to go for some height. Okay, so hold on. Last but not least, to go along with the, uh, with the color theme of green, I am going to put in some candles. Now normally, of course, I wouldn't have them in plastic, but I scored these at an estate sale, a huge estate sale recently, and obviously the people never use them. So if this is the, if this is the winning display, um, these will come out of the plastic, of course. But I used to be one for just having all white candles, but I've realized, you know what? Again, I live in Florida. Um, color is what is all around us in uh, every shape and form, uh, from the plant life to the animal life to just the sky and such. So why not incorporate in the home? That's the way my home is. That's the philosophy that I have behind everything I'm doing. And so I am pushing the color um, story here with the green, and again, Fall, fall and winter in Florida is a little bit different from the rest of the continental U.S. because we've got beautiful weather down here, so um, we're still seeing tons of green and so on and so forth. So, this is setup number one. Very formal, you know, in, in its look, but it's also got a very strong chinoiserie Asian theme going along with it as well as a strong color story. So, here is option number one, all right? I'll put up a picture so you can see it from the front view. Um, unfortunately, I had to put the camera where it's at so that you can see me doing this, but I will make sure you get a good close-up. Alrighty? So, off to vignette number two. Okay, so let's get started for the second vignette. Now, this one is going to be a little bit more asymmetrical. We won't have the same things going on on each side because I want to give you some variety. So, let's get started with the base. Now, Here's a tip for you. Whenever I do a vignette of any sort, whether it be on my coffee table or my cabinets or whatever it might be, um, and keep an eye out because I will be doing videos. I'm going to be switching out other decor in my house for the fall as well, so keep an eye out. Um, but as I was saying, what I like to do is if I'm going to create something on a surface, I like it to be contained so it doesn't feel like it's too scattered, or at least the majority of it contained. Um, because I have a lot of collections, because I have a lot of vignettes and things happening on, on specific surfaces, whatever I do, um, I want it to feel contained and organized, not cluttered and scattered and haphazard. So I always typically start with some sort of um, intrinsic boundary, such as what a tray would create. So I've got this beautiful olive -y, no, it's not really olive, it's kind of like a, a little bit, like an olive yellowish green, uh, with gold handles, this is a vintage tray from the 50s and 60s, okay? And I've got a, a nice collection of these, so there's my base. Okay, now I'm going to continue building, and put this here, because this is a um, an onyx or marble, I think it's marble, marble candlestick, really, really heavy, in a cream tone, and I've got a wonderful little Transferware bowl, it's an unusual shape. Um, it makes the eye, you know, move. And that's again, another important tip whenever I create a vignette. If you watched my video last week when I did my vignettes in my bookshelf, in my bedroom, uh, one, of the, one of the things that I talked about a lot was making the eyes of the viewer move along the display. And that's what you want to do. And to do that, you have to have highs and lows. And sorry, my eye just caught a little debris here that I do not want to be, or do not want to have in the video, so I will take that out as I put this down, but this forces the eye, as I was saying, to drop down. Now, I want to keep doing that throughout the display, so I'll be adding some other things of different levels, so beautiful transfer wear ball. Okay, get right back. Okay, looky here. 
got myself another mid-century uh, vase, a little bit more traditional in terms of the subject matter. It's a, actually it's not really traditional because it's an antelope, um, but we'll call it a deer with big horns, okay? So it fits within the fall scheme. But here's something I want you to look at. Now, I could easily put this like this, right? And I might have to come stand in front there to take a look at this to see how it's looking because um, I'm going to try to work on the balance. But I could do it like this so that I have the similarly colored items beside each other. Or I could set up some contrast and do this. So I'm going to step over here and take a quick look because that is what design is all about. Stepping back and taking a look constantly to make sure that what you're doing is what you want it to do. So, you probably see my back, I'm so sorry. But I'm liking the way that's looking because I like the contrast here of the color and the material. Because this to me is a little too similar. And what it does is it draw, you know, it forces the eye to do this circular thing here, all right? So we're doing good. Okay, but we are not done. I'm gonna add another item here. You're like, oh my goodness, Frank, what the heck? Yes, I know. I just kind of caused a little craziness because I have added a piece outside of the boundary. Um, it's a different form, but again, it, it does create movement. Um, it's within the color palette that I'm going for here. I've got a couple more things to grab. And it creates visual interest. So let me grab the last two items. And bam, just like before, putting the candles in. Okay, now I'm going to step back so I can take a look at this. Now because I added this puppy here, I'm going to scooch this over just a little bit. And you're like, oh my gosh, Frank, that's throwing everything off because it's not perfectly centered. Well, that's the point of it. It's not supposed to be perfectly centered, but it's still going to feel balanced because of what I'm doing here. So, I like the way this looks. It creates a beautiful, like I said, interesting display. The color of the green is found in the transferware, so that's connecting it, as well as there's some green here, and you can't really see it from there, but there is green in the ceramic as well. But this has a very, and of course the tray. So this has a very strong woodland feel to me. And yes, we do have deer in Florida, believe it or not. I was kind of shocked about that, but we have them everywhere. So um, that is not out of the scope of what is in the area. So this to me is something that feels a little bit more woodsy, a little bit more um, rural um, and fall-esque uh, in a traditional sense. So but it's still interesting, right? It's just different. So take a good look. I will take a picture of this as well so that you can see that. And then we'll get started with uh, setup number three. Okay, folks, it's off to vignette number three, which is a lot like vignette number one in the sense that it's going to be a symmetrical display. And um, I'm gonna start off just like with the others with your base. So be right back. So. Here's my platter. It is a chinoiserie-esque design, so very Asian-inspired in its look. It's actually English, and that is my bottom layer. Next, as before, I'm going to bring in a platform, but this time it's a carved wooden rectangular or rectangular-esque shape because I want to add some contrast in terms of material, wood versus the ceramic, and I wanted to have a contrast to the shape. So I've got the oval and then I've got the rectangle. And you want to keep thinking about these things. You don't want everything to be round and, and, and curvy or uh, linear and, and you know, very angled and straight. So think about breaking those, those things up by bringing in opposites. And of course, contrasting in terms of color, the wood grain, uh, caramelly versus the white and blue, which complement each other because there is a rim of gold around this, but 
also contrast. So, next thing. As you can see, another terrine, another blue and white, very oriental inspired, Asian inspired, um, also English. And I'm gonna put that on top of here. Now, just as I did before, I had a terrine uh, on a platform, a heavily carved platform, right? And this terrine is heavily decorated and different pattern, different colorways, and don't be scared about mixing patterns up. You know, just keep in mind if you're gonna do that, um, try to think of patterns that are big, medium, and small. So that when you're mixing it, they're not all medium sized and kind of cover the surfaces in the same kind of way. Um, as you can see, this is a, a larger design. Everything's more spaced out. There's more negative space on the platter. Um, the detailing is a little bit bigger and it's also kind of contained within a specific area so it feels a lot less patterned versus this which is heavily patterned on every surface, the top, even the inside as you can see. Actually, I'm going to turn it this way so if someone opens it up they can see the beautiful pattern in the correct way. So there we go. There's that. Now, the two pieces on the side, they're going to create the balance. Be right back. And here we are. We've got two vases here, silver. So that's another material that's contrasting, right? Because everything else is, uh, you know, wood and ceramic. And they've got a beautiful pattern. Now I'll show you close-up pictures of all these things so that you can see on both sides of the platter with some faux greenery in here to add a third color. I typically don't like vignettes to just have, um, you know, one or two colors. Three or more is always the way to go because I think it adds more interest. Unless you're specifically going for a very monochromatic look, which in my home doesn't make sense because I've got colors splashed everywhere and patterns everywhere. To do a monochromatic um, vignette would be very, um, actually very stark in comparison to everything else. It, look, it would look off. So for me, I love color, I love pattern, and I love texture, and that's what this brings in here. I wish I could um, put in real greenery, but just realistically speaking, something like that would have to be changed out all the time. Um, and uh, this adds some consist consistency with a little bit less maintenance. So I use um, faux greenery sparingly, uh, only when I know like if it's going to be in an area that I can't reach to water regularly or it doesn't get a lot of light. Or in this instance, I don't want water sitting in these metal vases for any extended period of time because I don't want it to wear out the inside. They're beautiful brass uh, with um, silver all over top of it and I want them to last a long time so this is what I did. Now the greenery also adds as well as the vases height, some texture and some movement so again your eye still moves and again contrast because the color um, and it you know they, everything kind of ties together the greenery with the wood and the, the floral patterns uh, with the patterns on the ceramic pieces. So uh, that is vignette number three. I will show you a picture of it as well. And uh, let's get started on the last vignette, okay? So vignette number four, our last one. As with the others, I'm gonna start with my base. Recognize this. And the thing is, you know, to have a collection of trays of various sizes, shapes, and colors, and even styles. Like this is, again, very mid-century modern, but it is a very chinoiserie-inspired, Asian-inspired motif that's going on on the side. Um, at least in my eyes it is. But I can see it going many other ways, but definitely a very, it has got a very ethnic feel to it. So I like using things like that, especially if I'm building up um, something that has that kind of a story behind it, okay? So there's the base. Next item. Okay, so these two pieces, very reminiscent of the vase that I had in my very first vignette, um, or my original vignette that I had on the table. These are both from Spain and Portugal. They're ceramics that look woven, and I have in them lemons. Now, these are actually faux lemons because, uh, again, in Florida, I can buy a bag of lemons and in a week and a half, if I'm not using them, they are going to be rotted because it's just, you can't avoid it down here. So, uh, something that I learned from a uh, Greek designer 
um, from television. It's very well known. Uh, according to his family, you should have nine lemons. I don't know if it's ha they have to be real, so I'm going to try it. But nine lemons uh, in a container or in a bowl on a table to bring good fortune and good luck. So I've got nine in both of these, and I'm hoping that brings me double the luck and double the money. So, and again, look at the vignette as it is. I'm creating some height differential, some texture and color uh, variety. I've already got three colors here, the cream, the yellow, and the green. And even the, some of the fake lemons have green in them too so we're bringing the color up from the bottom here our base let's keep going candles now this is actually a very asymmetric or this is an asymmetric setup because I don't have the same things going on on both sides right so we got the pillar candles I have to go step in front so I can see again what it looks like Let's do some slight adjusting because again, I want your eyes to move. I want to create some layers. I don't want everything to be lined up. I want to break lines. I like things to be crooked and undulating, both as you're looking down on it, as you're looking straight up on, on it, from, as you're looking from the side on it, uh, so that your eyes keep moving. Now I know I just said that uh, um, you know a monochromatic kind of vignette would probably be very stark. Even though there's a lot of cream going on here, I don't consider this monochromatic because I've got the greens and the yellows in here. But the reason why I chose to go this route, and I still have one more item to put on this side, but the reason why I chose to go this route is because lemons are actually a fall winter harvest fruit. So it's appropriate for the fall winter season. You would think, oh, you know, spring, summer. Nope, fall and winter. Let me get the last item. And here we go. Last item. Oops. Actually, I did this backwards. I'm, I'm looking at it as I was doing it before. Let me switch this around because I did it this way in my original plan because I want this to break the line here of the breaking the, the plane of this vignette. As I'm looking down on it, these branches are going into it, um, and so it's visually breaking this up. So it's not like I'm perfectly positioning it so nothing interferes on the look. I like it when the lines are broken. I like it when things are a little bit off. Um, because again, it adds interest, and that's the name of the game. So when you're looking at it from the top, it's doing this kind of snaking motion undulation. It's doing this. You know, you're going up and down. You're looking at the different leaves. You've got different um, things catching your eye, and that's what you always want to do. This is a simple brass vase. It's got some beautiful patination on it, so it's got a little bit of that greenish tone undertone to it. I've got the uh, faux greenery in it, and again, everything relates. This is not the same as this side, so we've got the asymmetry going, which, again, uh, asymmetry, almost intrinsically, if you do it right, will create movement. Symmetry can be a little stagnant, so you have to be careful because if things are too evenly uh, uh, sized, then you're not going to get that movement. But when you have asymmetry, it's almost, it's almost uh, guaranteed that you're going to have some sort of visual movement. But you add more by, by creating the height differentials and you're adding texture and again color, things that move the eye around the vignette. And this is the last one. And surprise, surprise, of course, I do the last one because this is the one that is going to be my winning um, vignette. It's going to stay on the table for the fall and winter. It's easy enough for us to move out of the way because, again, like I said, Jim and I do eat at this table every day for all of our meals. And so I have to be able to push things aside easily for us. And then in a pinch, uh, if I need to remove everything for a uh, get-together or party, I can do so with no problems. So I hope you got some... Great tips. I hope you got some inspiration and some more information to, to you know, put in your pocket of knowledge so that when you're creating your displays, um, you're doing so with a little more thoughtfulness and purpose. As always, if you enjoy my videos, please give me a thumbs up. Please comment. Please subscribe. Please share with your friends and family. And come back again next week because I'm going to be working through my house and changing up other vignettes in my home. So I hope you uh, will come back and watch me do that. Have a good one, folks, and I'll see you next week. If you haven't seen our previous videos, 
click on the links and watch away. Please share, like, and most importantly, subscribe to our channel. We'll do our best to keep you entertained and coming back for more. Bye for now.